Hi, dear friends, cultural creatives and seekers everywhere, Bruce here. Well, maybe you've seen the latest news that is so profoundly important, and that is the population of planet Earth has just reached 8 billion people. Well, this whole number is a very scary number for our individuals on this planet because there's a belief that it's the increase in population that is producing what we now recognize to be the sixth mass extinction of life. There are those that believe if we just eliminate the population, we'll resolve the crisis, that it's the people number that is the problem. And from their point of view, we have to do something to eliminate that population. The notion that the population is the source of today's problem really stems from work from 1798 by a philosopher by the name of Thomas Malthus. He's the guy that said that food, plants, don't grow at the same rate as animals, that plants grow arithmetically. In other words, every year you add one more. So if a farmer makes one bushel one year, the next year he makes two, the next year he makes three by increasing his ability. But at the same time, the animals are actually doubling their population. So there might be two animals the first year, but four animals the second year, eight animals the third, 16 on the fourth. And what you're seeing is a, a different progression. One, two, three, four, five, arithmetic progression. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, geometric progression. I go, significance is things that are growing at a geometric progression will outgrow anything that was growing at an arithmetic progression. Animals are reproducing faster than the food source is the simple conclusion. And as a result, there's going to be a struggle, according to Malthus, where too many animals will have to struggle to compete to who's going to get the food. And therefore, Thomas Malthus' idea, which was incorporated in Charles Darwin's theory, fundamentally in his theory, is that population is the problem. As spelled out in Darwin's theory of evolution, the whole idea is that too many people can only be resolved by actually called something like disease or famine or war. And, but the question is this, is the population increase the problem or is the population increase the result of a problem? And this is what we have to understand right now. A fact that emphasizes the nature of the biological imperative in controlling the population comes down to simply this. In those countries where life expectancy is low, the population increases at a much higher rate as compared to countries where the life expectancy is a lot longer. In those countries, the increase in population is actually very, very low. So the idea is simply this. Population is dependent on the threat to a species. The greater the threat, the more reproduction. Science has totally recognized that fear, stress, and insecurity are the cause of a reduction in lifespan and an increase in the reproduction. Well, should we blame the people and the reproduction on this problem? Well, let me give you an analogy, and that analogy is this. We believe that uh, cancer is due to genetics, which causes cells to turn into tumors. And as the cells turn into tumors, they undermine the biology and people die from the cancer. And therefore, we've led ourselves to believe that the cells are the cause of the problem. And this is why cancer issues sometimes are great failures, because they kill all the tumor cells, only to find that the cancer regrows in the same or another place in the body again. And so point was, will killing the cancer cells solve the problem of not living in harmony? I go, absolutely not. Then I go, will reducing the population of the humans on this planet solve the issue of a mass extinction? I go, no, because it's not the number of humans that are causing the extinction. In fact, science has even recognized that 8 billion people, we can even have more people and sustain them on this planet. We're just not living in harmony. So killing cancer cells or killing people doesn't really cause the source of the problem to disappear. It's both cases, whether it's cancer or the extinction, it's that we're not living in harmony. So if we want a resolution for this issue, we then have to stop focusing on people as the problem and start saying, how can we change the cultural understanding so that humans will start to learn to live in harmony with nature than, rather than undermining it? One of the most important sources of information about how to resolve the issues we're in comes from the I Ching. Because a symbol for crisis is also the symbol for opportunity. While we look at today at the population and say this is a crisis affecting us, the increase in population on this planet gives us a great opportunity to share the awareness of all these individuals so we can build a better understanding of the technology needed 
for us to thrive into the future. Conclusion is very simple. We're looking at an increase in population. Many people are blaming that population for the extinction that we're facing when it turns out this is completely wrong. <laughs> the population increase is the result of the extinction, not the cause of that extinction. And the resulting population, as we've seen over the history of the evolution of technology, the more individuals that are contributing to the picture, the greater the opportunity of resolution of the problems we face. So it's an important point for us to, at this day, when 8 billion people are on this planet, is not to focus on the numbers of how many they are, but it's to focus on the intelligence that cooperatively we can create. And that intelligence will be the one that will take us into a future where guess what? The population will go back and decline and balance itself out. So, good news. It's not the bad news that you heard. The bad news is, hey, we're not living in harmony. The good news is we can create that harmony. Our technology is going to take us out of the threat and put us into a, not just a sustainable future, but a thrivable future.